Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there, and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube, and you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, people, Timothy Coggins. This Timothy Coggins situation. So first, I would like to say condolences to the family of Timothy Coggins. After all these years, they finally got some answers. Uh, but this uh, Timothy Coggins case is, is very interesting. It's typical, but it's interesting. And it proves a lot of what we discuss on this channel and a lot of the comments on this channel. So this is a case where the entire white community formed Voltron and they disregard the evil and sinister acts of people in their community just to protect one of their own, even if their own are some of the lowest, most vile, disgusting, knuckle-dragging specimens. You know, as long as these people do something to somebody who is black, who was melanated, they don't care. They will go above and beyond to protect it. And in this case right here with Timothy Coggins is proof. So here's a little more of what happened. The year is 1983, and the location is Sunnyside, Georgia, okay? So Timothy Coggins, a 23-year-old young black man, he has a reputation for white girlfriends and liking white girls, okay? This is what they said about Timothy Coggins. I wish there was more information out about him, but pretty much, man, the, the main things that I can get is the fact that he liked to dance and he liked having white girlfriends, you know? Um... So, and it was in 1983, there was no social media. You can't go look at his profile. So that's what we know about that. And the fact that he did like, did have a reputation for liking these white girls is important in his story anyway. So there was some knuckle dragging beasts in the white community who knew that Timothy Coggins had a reputation for liking white girls. And they felt as though they had to stand up for their race and they should do something about it. Okay. So these two trolls, named William Moore and Frankie Gebhardt. They decided to go and catch Timothy Coggins at a dance club that black people usually hung out at and frequented in Sunnyside, Georgia, okay? So, so some kind of way, these two trolls, they, 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 they kind of lured Timothy Coggins into their car that was parked across the street from the dance club that Timothy Coggins was at. So they said, okay, we're going to go down there we're going to get this dude. We're tired of him liking white girls and having white girlfriends. Let's go down there. So they went there to the club in some kind of way. Timothy Coggins got into the car with these dudes. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not a good sign, right? I mean, I don't understand why he got in the car, why he would get in the car. They did not go in the club and, you know, beat him up with all the other black people in there and drag him out. He actually went into the car. But it's not surprising based off of what they said about him. He might have thought that these white guys were his friends. He might have thought that one of them was the brother or the cousin of one of the white girls that he liked. And he figured, OK, let me get in here with them. It's all good. But regardless of what he thought, he was in for a surprise. When he finally got in the car... These dudes stabbed him 30 times. And when they stabbed him, they left a Confederate, like a Confederate emblem or something like that on his body. They carved it in his skin. OK, now, after they stabbed him all these times, they tied him to the back of their pickup truck with chains. They chained him to the back of this pickup truck. And then they went somewhere and just dragged his body across the asphalt until he just no longer moved anymore. I mean, they just pulled him and burned his body until it just looked like he didn't even look human anymore, they said. He just imagine just a piece of meat just being dragged and dragged behind a car, just being burned and mangled and beat down on the asphalt. That's what they did. After they did that, they threw him in a grassy ditch and kept it moving. 
Now the authorities say, or the investigators, they said that his corpse was so badly damaged that they couldn't even identify him. Now these two, these two things right here, this dude Gebhardt and Moore, after they did this, they went around boasting to their buddies about what they did to Timothy Coggins. So it was very well known within the white community what they did. Now, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation said that they also said that they felt that they were protecting the white race from black people for what they did. So what they did to Kim Timothy Coggins, they felt as though it was honorable and they were doing it for their race. OK. Now, they say that after these two pale things did this to Timothy Coggins, they would often boast to other people in the white community. And, and they also use what they did as a intimidation tactic. So. They would say things to other people to scare them all through the years, like, you, 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 I'll do you like we did that nigger. Or, you know, they said that this dude Gephardt would even use it on his girlfriends and say, hey, I'll do you just like we did that nigger, throw him in a ditch and this, this and that. So they would use what they did to Timothy Coggins as an intimidation thing to other white people in the community whenever they had any issues or things like that, or just to boast about what they did, because I'm sure that there were many people in that community who were just impressed by what they did and don't care. So, so throughout the years, the, the investigators say that these two dudes, these two trolls, they had their entire community in fear and on lock. Nobody would dare speak about what they did because people were actually scared of these dudes. They were really terrified of these dudes. Now, the, the reason that they went on for an entire decade without getting in trouble for this savage murder is because, one, they had people terrified. Two, there ain't enough people in their little, you know, troll community down there in Georgia that actually cared about the life of a 23-year-old black man in the first place. So that's easy to do. So these dudes didn't get caught until the year 2017. They got caught in 2017. Now, these two guys, they're running around this get part and this other dude. They have a reputation for being thuggies. They have a violent reputation. They were laborers at a place called the Pulp Mill. You know, people knew them as nasty, racist guys. They both had rap sheets. This one get part, he was charged with aggravated assault several times, and he also did time in the Georgia State Penitentiary. Now, People pretty much knew that these two guys, they had no problem hurting people, even in their own community. They were known as violent thugs, okay? And in addition, now here's the kicker. These two trolls also had the support of the local police department, okay? They had the support of the local police department. Now these two crackers here, by the name of Gregory Huffman and Lamar Bunn, they were on the local police force. Lamar Bunn's mother, Sandra Bunn, also helped in this matter, okay? So they have Gregory Huffman and Lamar Bunn who are on the police force, and they have Sandra Bunn. And these people went on years covering up and protecting what these dudes did to Coggins, okay, the black man. Eventually, these, this Gre Gregory Huffman, Lamar Bunn, and his mother, Sandra Bunn, they were all charged with obstruction of justice for what they did, okay? So it is true what they were doing, okay? The one Gregory Huffman, he's accused of revealing the identity of a confidential informant who was being used against Gebhardt. And we'll get into that because pretty much these dudes, Gebhardt and the other one, they were caught. But what Gregory Huffman, Lamar Bunn, and his mom, Sandra Bunn, were doing is they were pretty much just trying to cover things up, get rid of evidence, make sure no, no information got out. And when somebody did become a confidential informant, they told them, OK, this guy, Gebhardt, he said he did this, this and this. What they did was told him who actually did it. This guy, Lamar Bunn, he worked for the Spalding County Sheriff's, the Sheriff's Office, and he also worked in another uh, police department after that. His mother, she was charged because... She did something. I don't know what her actual job is, but she looked like one of them, you know, old nasty pug faced white secretary ladies down there living in the South somewhere that just work in the office and do whatever she wants, say what she wants. You know, she got all the files and records. These are the type of people that you have to deal with sometime to get information. Now, they reported that half of the evidence 
and this Timothy Coggins investigation had disappeared over the years. It disappeared over the years. All those years, and there were no breaks in this case. You know what I'm saying? So they had these white guys in the Blue Klux Klan who worked in the police department. They're getting rid of evidence, and they tr they're notifying and alerting these killers of somebody who spoke, what's going on. They, they got it all working for them. So there you go. So you know we aren't crazy when we hear about these cases and they say the police don't have evidence, this is and that, it can't be proven, this is and that. These people always form Voltron to protect each other, y'all. These white knuckle dragon beasts in these small towns in the South or whatever, Midwest, and even sometimes in the big cities have total control to cover up what they do. And this is just a, a, a perfect example. This case probably could have been solved within the first two years that, that it happened. This is the norm. Unless they get exposed by, by, unless something bigger comes up that's going to embarrass these people or it's not worth it for them anymore to protect their own, then they'll throw their people out there. But other than that, they're usually going to protect their peoples, you know. Over three decades with this Timothy Cogman situation, no clues, no DNA, no forensics, no nothing. Nothing. Because they were getting rid of everything. Now, this is the tournament. This is the only reason why this case broke open. The case only broke open when this dude Gebhard, this troll, he was in prison for one of his bids for something that he had done other than this. Some other, you know, he had a he has a lengthy criminal record. So when he was in prison, he ba he bragged to another white dude or some other white dudes about what he did to a black person, Timothy Coggins. That was probably going to give him more respect you know, amongst his brotherhood or whatever he was rolling with. So he bragged about it. Now, of course, you know he's bragging to criminals. All these guys want to get out of prison. And they, and I guess one guy took advantage of the fact that he could use this information to get a reduced sentence, and that's exactly what he did. So he called the authorities, pretty much told them, I got some information on a murder, this, this, and that. It happened, this, this, and that. What can you do for me? Boom, they swung a deal. And... He gets out earlier, however, I don't know, you know, I mean, the terms of what, what he worked out, but it did work out for him. And they go snatch up these guys for the murder of Timothy Coggins after 30 years, over 30 years. Now, they took these guys in and in the end, it took the jury just six hours to return a guilty verdict. This dude Gebhardt was convicted of committing a murder that was driven by racial hatred. He got life plus 20. He's done. He's a dunyan. It's over. The other troll, William Moore, he was already in prison, I believe, and he like died during this trial or right after this trial. It don't matter. He ain't make it. He was already sick. He's not here. You know, I wish he would have, you know, had to go through some torture, you know, for what he did, but whatever. So the thing about this, y'all, is if this dude Gebhardt had not bragged about this to other people, if he kept his mouth shut, it, it would have worked out for him. You would never, they would have got this off and it would have been done, which is the same thing they do now. This is the perfect example of how these little small town hick troll departments in the South or the Midwest or whatever, how they operate when somebody got to go there and get information from them. This is what they doing. So people are not crazy when they say, come on, man, y'all got something. This is what they do. They didn't get caught because the police did a great job or they just wanted to prove this case. They only got caught because this dude opened his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Something else in this situation, which is very unfortunate, y'all. In the year 1983, this young man, Timothy Coggins, he's 23 years old. He pretty much handed him his noose. And a lot of times when this stuff happens to us, y'all, not all the time, but a lot of times we hand them, we pretty much hand them a noose and just, you know, for putting ourselves in bad situations or doing things because we don't understand how these white people operate. We don't understand the extent of the evil they might do because people might have told you something or somebody might have seen something. You say, oh, no, that's not true. They all ain't like you can't do. This. Come on, man. But anyway, Timothy Coggins got in the car with these dudes and you look at these dudes. We got pictures of them here when they older. You know, these were some ugly troll faced pigs even when they was young. You know what I'm saying? They, their baby pictures are probably troll looking up. You know what I'm saying? Who gets in the car with these type of dudes? Timothy Coggins did. A, a man who just loved white women. You know what I mean? And it's a shame. I don't want this to happen to nobody just because they love white women. Nobody has the right to take a life 
regardless of what, unless they took a life and it's vigilante justice. But other than that, no, I mean, regardless of how we feel, it's bigger than that. You know, nobody has the right to take another person's life, but it just goes to show you this is what it is, yo. You know what I'm saying? This is this is what they do to these dudes. You know what I mean? And I do believe that they felt that Timothy Coggins was a weak black person. They can get it off simply because which, what we got to understand is these white supremacist guys are these guys who try to act like they, they like white pe black people when they got black friends. They look at black men who love to be with Becky's and Emily's and, you know, they look at them as weak people. I'm telling you, I know this for a fact. They, they look at it as a detachment or it's an opening. OK, like this dude. Damn, he, he, he's a weakling. He just loves white women. He just always run white. They look at that as an opportunity. They look at they look at these men as weak people. You can even ask them. They will tell you. They now they may act like they like these people. You may see pictures of them with black people, you know, hugging it up, drinking a beer, looking stupid with their tongue hanging out and all this other stuff. But they never respect these black men. They never respect them. You know what I'm saying? The only way that they respect him is, is if he just beating them, beating the, beating the brakes off of him. He got them in serious order. You know what I mean? Which is very well. Like he really got them scared like a Debo type, which is not going to happen. That's very rare because a black man like that won't even be around them. You know what I mean? But this is how these white supremacists guys typically feel about black men who just always confess their love and profess their love for white women. They always around white women. They know that they can get these dudes, you know what I'm saying? They, but they recognize real strength when they see it. They see it as a detachment from their people, and oh, boom, we got to open, and we can do this to them. You know what I mean? And it was. But look, Timothy Coggins got right in the car with these dudes, y'all. He got right in the car with them. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. These people, they know how to exploit people with this mindset. Anyway, y'all, you know, um, a very sad tragedy here. You know, after 30 years, they finally got these dudes. They finally got these dudes. But like I said in a previous video, this is how it usually goes. The white girlfriend, her male family members or male friends usually are the ones who take out the black man, the black boyfriend or whatever. And on the other hand, the white men usually brutally kill and, you know, run black women over with cars. So the white men are more so do it because they have physical superiority over women. So they can beat black women to death or beat them with a pipe or whatever, run them over with a car, which anybody could do. But, you know, but on the other hand, the girls, they can't beat black men. So usually their male family members, their male friends or whatever, sit back, they get drunk, and then they, they're usually the ones that smash, uh, smash the black man out in these cases. But anyway, y'all, easy.